4.2. In this lesson, our objective is to graph quadratic functions in vertex form or intercept form. Let's talk about vertex form first. It should look really familiar from when we graphed absolute value equations. I've got an H and a K. Just like on absolute values, notice the formula says minus H and plus k. We change the sign on h, we leave the sign the same on k. Vertex form also gives us the axis of symmetry. It's always at x equals h. So we don't have to use the formula negative b over 2a this time. And just like standard form, the a tells us whether or not this opens up or down, and it tells us if it's steep or wide. So let's take a look at an example. Is graph y equals negative one fourth x plus two squared plus five. First thing we'll do is identify our vertex. That's plus two tells us the h, except we change the sign. Always change the sign for h. We're really asking ourselves, what number can I put in the parentheses to make this equal zero? And we leave the sign the same on y. So negative two comma five. At that point, we can start to draw our graph already. We know where the vertex is. We also know this is going to open up side down. So as far as I'm concerned, unless I tell you to give me specific information, you just need a little bit more to draw the rest of the graph. I think a great choice might be the y-intercept. And we should remember how to find a y-intercept. That's by plugging in 0 for x. So go ahead and plug in 0 for x and see what you get. See if you can get the same thing I get. I get 4. Notice it looks like I only have two points, but I really have three points. And that's thanks to the axis of symmetry. If I've got a point over here, then I've got to get a point on the other side of the axis of symmetry as well. Now I have a few points, and that's enough to do a rough sketch of my graph. I don't know my x-intercepts when I do it like this, but I could go through more work, and we'll look at some strategies for finding those out later. But this is enough for a rough sketch. Go ahead and pause the video and read this and see if you can figure it out. I'll give you a hint. You're not going to have to work anything out or draw any picture. Notice the problem itself gives you an x and a y axis. And without actually saying it, it also tells us that the vertex is at 1,427. We're supposed to figure out how far across this whole piece of bridge is. Well, if the first piece goes out to 1,400, back right to the vertex, Let's see if you can think real quick. How big this other piece is going to be? If you thought 1,400, you're right. So let's figure out the whole distance across the bridge. Goes back to geometry, the segment addition postulate. We've got 1,400 and 1,400 for a total of 2,800. If you stop there, you miss a point. If you know why you're going to miss a point, good for you. Because we left off feet. Now we're done. That's 2,800 feet, not 8,800. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do that later. Next, we're going to look at how to graph intercept form. It's called intercept form because looking at a factored quadratic function tells us the x-intercepts, as we can see in the picture. Notice that the signs change. It says if we've got a factor x minus p, P is a factor. X minus Q, Q is a factor. The reason the signs change is because we're really saying what number can we put in the parentheses to make that factor zero. So the signs change. P minus P is zero, Q minus Q is zero. We also get a shortcut to the axis of symmetry. It's halfway between P and Q. So once we know P and Q, we can add them together, divide by two, and we've got it. And as always, if a is bigger than zero, we open up, otherwise we open down. So let's check this out in an example. 
graph a quadratic function in intercept form. I know that for my x intercepts, I'm really just changing the sign of my factors. I see x plus 3, so I'm going to say x equals negative 3. x minus 1 tells me x equals 1. And I can do a real quick sketch that uses that information. I also can get my axis of symmetry without too much difficulty. We've got a formula that says to just go p plus q over 2 because it's right in the middle of the two x-intercepts. In this case, it's going to be negative 3 plus 1 over 2, which is negative 1. When you draw that dotted line for the axis of symmetry, it should be right in the middle. If not, something went wrong. Figure out our vertex now. We haven't figured out the vertex yet. We always want the vertex. It's the most important piece of the parabola. We just need to plug that x into our original equation, just like always. That x from the axis of symmetry. Let's go ahead and plug that negative 1 into the original equation. You'll get your answer. And then you'll be done. One thing I did not figure out specifically is my y-intercept. If I wanted to get that accurately or if I needed to get it accurately, I could have gotten that just by going back to the original equation and plugging in 0 for x, just like finding the y-intercept on any other type of problem. At this point, go ahead and pause the video, read this over, see if you can figure out what's going on. I decided to rewrite that equation Instead of saying x, I wrote x minus 0, which is the same thing. This makes it a little easier to see that the x-intercepts are 0 and 46. If our a says how far is the football kicked, well, the football's kicked however far it goes before it hits the ground. It hits the ground at two places. It's on the ground at 0 and 46. Obviously, we didn't kick it 0 yards, so we must have kicked it 46 yards. Don't forget your units. Part B says, what's the football's maximum height? Well, this is a parabola, so the maximum has to occur at the vertex. And we know how to find the maximum of a parabola. We just find the x value of the vertex, and then we find the y value of the vertex. Go ahead and use the formula for finding the vertex, or the x value of the vertex, also known as the axis of symmetry. Use that formula, see if you get the right number. Once you do have that number, that's your x value. To figure out our y value, which is what we really care about, we've got to plug it in. And you can do that with a calculator, or you can do it by hand. I'd recommend a calculator, especially because of the decimal. Once you do that, you'll get 13.8 yards. Don't leave off the yards. And that's it for that one. At this point, you can pause the video and try these, or you can do that later. Next, we see FOIL. It's the same thing as the distributive property. FOIL is just a little acronym that a lot of people like to use. First, outer, inner, last. Not much to say about this. I think we're all experts at it. FOIL lets us, or distributive property lets us, write something like this in standard form. Remember, standard form means we want it to look like so. So go ahead and make sure you can multiply this out. Get the same thing I get. If not, try to find your mistake. If you notice, I waited until the end to distribute the minus 2. I could have done it at the beginning. I could put the negative 2 inside either one of those parentheses, but not both. No matter how you do it, if you do it correctly, you should get this at the end. One more, we're going to go from vertex form to standard form. Pretty much the same idea. Actually a little bit harder just because of the way it's set up. But if you start like this, the rest of it should come together pretty nicely. So multiply these guys together, then distribute the 4, and then add the 9. Once you do all that, see if you get the same result I get. And that's it. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own.
converting to standard form, or you can do this later. Other than that, we are done with this video.